Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to give y'all an update on compounded terzepatide. Terzepatide is known by the name brand Manjaro or Zepbound and is produced by Eli Lilly. A couple of weeks ago, Eli Lilly stated that Zepbound and Manjaro were no longer difficult to find and wanted to take them off the medication shortage list. And last week, the FDA agreed and said that Zepbound and Manjaro should be off the medication shortage list because they are now in adequate supply. For anyone that actually uses those medications and for the doctors that prescribe them, we know that that is not the case. Interestingly enough, a couple of days ago, the Outsourcing Facilities Association filed a lawsuit against the FDA stating that they didn't make a decision about this medication with enough information and they're asking a judge to put a temporary restraining order on any decisions surrounding that. We should know more about the decision that the judge makes by October 15th or so, so I'll keep you guys posted. I'm hopeful that the judge will say that the FDA acted prematurely and with too much overreach so that trisepatide will be placed back on the medication shortage list which then I think would alleviate a lot of concerns that I have, and I know a lot of other prescribers and physicians have with the compounded terzepatide. I also reached out to my local compounding pharmacy and just asked them what they thought about this decision and how they were going to move forward. They have decided to add vitamin B6 to their compounded semaglutide and terzepatide with the thought that that makes it a little bit different and it will no longer be essentially a copy of the medication. I still had some concerns about patent infringement and I talked about those in my last video a couple of days ago. I'll link that in the description below. So go watch that if you haven't had a chance to yet. But the pharmacist that I spoke to said that the FDA approved manufacturing plant that they get their active pharmaceutical ingredients terzepatide and semaglutide from are not infringing upon Eli Lilly's molecular patent. I don't really know why that is. I, I don't I don't understand the nuances of that, but that was the pharmacist's statement, so that was reassuring. He also said that there are multiple patents in place by Eli Lilly, and that's not uncommon for a pharmaceutical company to file multiple patents to protect their product. And one of the patents, the manufacturing patent, is still actually pending. So they don't have their patent established for terzepatide in that area settled yet. I would love for y'all to weigh in and give your comments on what you think about all this. You know, as a doctor, I really wish someone would guide me a little bit more. My medical associations have essentially told me don't prescribe compounded medications because they're not safe. And I've done a deep dive into compounded terzepatide and semaglutide in other videos that I've shared. And I really don't think safety is a concern if you use a reputable compounding pharmacy. So with that off the table, I wish my medical associations would give me guidance about the compounded anti-obesity medications. They worked really well for many of my patients that are unable to afford the medication or simply haven't been able to find it because of difficulties with supply. We also know that obesity is a disease and once the patients are doing well on medications for any disease, a disease like hypertension for instance, we don't suddenly remove those medications and hope for the best. We know that once patients have obtained success with their anti-obesity medications, that stopping the anti-obesity medications leads to weight gain. As a doctor, I don't understand all of the nuances with patent infringements, and I wish I was given more guidance on that. At this time, I'm continuing to move forward with prescribing compounded anti-obesity medications, and I'm just having to really have a discussion with patients about the addition of vitamin B6 and how at any moment these medications may go away depending on rulings and laws and decisions by the FDA. So as I mentioned last time, this is rapidly evolving. Stay tuned for further updates and please comment below if you have any thoughts or suggestions. Thanks for joining me.